started this morning. I think I'm gonna need some help. Well, I was wondering what to do when my thoughts quickly turn to you. Just because you are my friend and I just, I just, I just, I just need a reason to reach out. But there's nothing to talk about. It's not New Year's, you're not sick, or your birthday, Groundhog's Day. Nothing to congratulate. Out of ideas and out of friends, too. What can Samuel can I do? I'll reach you just cause I can, can, can. Morning everybody, how are we all doing out there? Hope you're feeling bright and breezy and that has woken you up as well as it has me. Now, we are on day four of my introduction to the pets that I am going to show you. We do have more pets. Um, my daughter would never forgive me if I didn't give an honorable mention to Apocado, the budgie. But the pet I'm going to talk to you about today is another one that I'm not going to show you in real life. Now, there are a few animals in the world that I'm a bit scared of. I'm scared of cats, for example, frogs. Look, now, I'm not being funny, but really, anything with a mouth that big that has no teeth on display is up to something as far as I'm concerned. Get rid of it. What else am I scared of? Man-eating giraffes, squirrels with guns. Okay, I admit it. I'm a coward with a number of different animals, including these things. Now, I know that there is a dad of a student out there who also has one of these things. In fact, I've been lucky enough to meet it once in his kitchen. And I also know that the dad in question will very happily pick his one up. Well, I take my hat off to you, Mr. B. You're a better man than me. I'm talking about Rebecca, the Brazilian white kneed tarantula. There she is, Rebecca. Now, as you can tell, I cannot claim to be a fan of these things, and I think it's because of how they look. <clears throat> Excuse me, many of us are a bit scared of spiders. The word for the fear of spiders is arachnophobia, which is a word that's so big that it's pretty scary in itself. Now, there's a story about a man in America many years ago who decided to get a free ride on a freight train, which is a train like this, which has separate carriages for carrying goods like fuel or machines or food. Anyway, he climbed into a carriage, slammed the door shut, which he couldn't then open from the inside, and looked around. And he couldn't believe his luck because he found that he'd chosen a carriage which was packed full of bananas. So he decided to settle back, rest, eat, relax, and enjoy the ride. Until the spiders started to crawl out. The carriage was full of not only exotic fruits, but also exotic spiders. And the story goes that by the time he was able to get out, so many spiders had crawled over him that he had to spend many weeks in hospital after. Even though the spiders themselves hadn't hurt him at all. He had made himself very sick through his own terror. The spiders hadn't done him any harm. Now, as I say, I'm not going to pick Rebecca up to show her to you because she wouldn't like that very much, and I'll be honest, nor would I, but I'm gonna show you this. This, and I have to be very careful because it's quite delicate. This, <laughs> believe it or not, is her skeleton. <clears throat> Excuse me. Us humans have our skeletons on the inside, whereas some creatures like crabs and spiders have their skeletons on the outside. This is called an exoskeleton. Now, in order to grow, spiders like Rebecca have to shed or take off their old exoskeleton. And this is one that came off about four weeks ago. It's quite clever, isn't it, really? Now, in our country, 
spiders are pretty harmless, even though many of us, including me, are a bit scared of them. They in fact help us an awful lot by eating lots of other nastier bugs like flies, but Rebecca here can be a little bit dangerous, and that's because she has to be. She comes from the jungles of Brazil. Here. And in the jungles of Brazil, there are lots of other animals who would like to make her their dinner, so she has to protect herself. Her first line of defense would be to rear up and show her fangs like this. That's a warning to say, you really don't want to mess with me. And if that doesn't work, she may then go on to bite, which for us people is unlikely to be too dangerous, um, it, although it would be very painful, but for many jungle animals, it's enough to stop them from hurting her. There's one other way that she can defend herself. Now, if Mr. Kiff can get the photo of her back up there, you can see that on her back, she has lots of little hairs. Well, she will use her legs to very quickly kick those hairs off onto whatever it is that's scaring her. And those hairs are really quite unpleasant and they would be very, very uncomfortable if you got them on you, especially in your eyes, which is another reason that I don't like her very much. Because imagine having so much hair that you throw loads of it away just because you've got the hump. It's not fair really, is it? Anyway, that's Rebecca. I can't claim to like her very much, but I do find her interesting. And I also accept that actually in our country particularly, our fear of spiders is much more of a problem than the spiders themselves, who are not only harmless, but actually very helpful to us, as long as they stay out of my bedroom. And that's the last of the pets that I'm gonna show. Now, why have I done this? Well, it was to introduce a project. The reason I've talked about pets is because the more we learn about them, the more interesting they become. Look at Teddy, my dog, who I spoke about yesterday. At first, he's just another big, lovable, smelly, hairy dog. But when you look into his history, it's really interesting. And I can guarantee that the same will be um, said about your pets or other animals that you like. Now, the Baker family helped me with this idea, so thank you very much to them. What I would like you to do is this. Research an animal or animals that you're interested in. It could be a pet, it could be a friend's pet, or it could just be an animal that you like. Find out as many interesting facts about them as you can. See your cat over there? <laughs> now, it's not just a cat, I promise you. Find out about cats. Sharks? Amazing! Find out about them. I'd like to hear about the interesting facts that you find out. Maybe you're even clever enough to be able to create some art. Maybe you can create a model. We want to see it. Make it interesting. Now, if you want to get really creative, how about a different challenge? How about creating your own animal? Again, make it interesting. Give it some real thought. Where would it live? What would it eat? How would it defend itself? Think about what it would need to do to survive. Now, I'm not thinking we should go crazy on this. No three-headed teacher eating monsters or anything like that. Make it an animal that might actually be real in our world. I can't wait to see what you come up with. And please send your work to the usual address. Now, during today's broadcast, we're going to be celebrating some of the work that's already come in, and I'll also be announcing the competition winners, so keep an eye out for that. But in the meantime, enough from me, over to Miss Knight to tell you about the Faculty of Creativity. Hello, Baycroft. I've been asked today to talk to you a little bit about the Creativity Faculty. Now, some of you are probably sat there thinking, hmm, Miss. What's a creativity faculty? Well, that is exactly what I'm going to tell you. Now, all of your subjects at school are split down into four faculties. And I am so lucky because I get to lead the faculty that includes some of my favorite subjects of all time. Can you guess what those subjects might be? Maybe? Not sure? Well, let me tell you. We have art, we have music, dance, photography, textiles, performing arts, and would you believe it, even Japanese. 
Now, the reason all of these subjects fall into the creativity faculty is because they require you to use your imagination and your original ideas to create something, anything. That means the possibilities are absolutely endless. Now, you will have already seen some of the challenges coming your way through the online learning from the creativity faculty. I'm sure you'll remember that great challenge that Miss Renouf set you before Easter, which required you to go around your house and find things that were yellow to create your own picture. Now, I don't know about you, but I was so surprised to see how many yellow things I had in my house. And I would have never thought to do that myself. So that idea really inspired me to get creative and use my imagination. And I'm sure it had the same effect on you guys too. You may have also been following some of the dance videos that myself and Mr. Smeaton have been posting, and I'm hoping that they're not only keeping you active, but they're also getting you to be a little bit creative yourself. Maybe you're coming up with your own choreography, and that is absolutely fantastic. Now, what I would like to know today is, is there anything you would like to see us teach on the online learning? If there is, drop us an email, let us know, and we will do our best to create a video that covers your ideas and your topics. Now, what I would like to say is, remember to stay safe, keep well, and my key tip for today is, always remember your imagination can take you absolutely anywhere. So even though you're stuck indoors, think about all those amazing places you can go just using your imagination. Keep those creative minds working and we'll speak to you again soon. Bye. Good morning Baycroft, it's lovely to be with you again this morning, I hope you're all well. This morning I just want to speak to you briefly about the house system and just to reassure you that we are still collecting those points. You've all been allocated points for those pieces of work that you've been emailing through to us. So first of all, I just wanted to say a, a, a massive well done and thank you to those of you who have been taking part and participating in sending that work through. It's been absolutely amazing and we've been really impressed by what you've produced so far. So um, today, Mr. Kiff has put together a virtual token collector, which you will see on the screen now. This will give you an update of the points that each house has collected so far and the tokens are going in and you can see that Blue House have taken the lead for this week. So a massive well done to Blue House. I just want to say, keep those pieces of work coming in. We are going to be doing an update weekly, so this could change this time next week. Uh, it be interesting to see what house will be in the lead then. Please make sure that you keep on watching Baycroft TV and taking part in as many challenges as you possibly can and sending those through to us. And that's it for me today. So please make sure you enjoy the weekend. Stay safe. Look after yourselves. That's it from me. Bye.
Yesterday's sign was worried. Today's sign is excited. Excited. I feel excited. Hi everyone, me back again, just looking to sign off for the day and indeed the week. Thank you very much for watching Baycroft TV. Um, hope you are still enjoying it. Have a wonderful weekend. Make sure you... Oh, sorry, excuse me. Hello? Oh, hello, Mr. Kiff. The competitions. Oh, of course, yeah. Okay, yeah, I'll get on to it. Thanks, bye. Sorry. Um, forgot all about that, didn't I? We need to announce our competition winners. Now, I did promise that we would be giving a five pound Amazon voucher to en Hello, Mr. Kiff. Yeah. 15? Did I? Was I drunk? Oh, God. Miss Miles is gonna kill me. Apparently it's a 15 pounds amateur voucher. Amateur voucher. <laughs> <laughs> amateur voucher <laughs> talk of an amateur Amazon voucher <laughs> um, and we're going to be giving it out to our competition winner now we actually only mentioned one competition but I'm going to be giving out two vouchers today and I do it with a slightly heavy heart and that's because we've had so much amazing work I think I've got this a bit wrong really because actually everyone deserves to get a voucher but unfortunately we really can't stretch to that so this week I'm going to be giving out two vouchers to the people that I'm about to name um, but from next week the vouchers will be giving out every Friday and it won't just be for one piece of work it will be for our outstanding contribution now that may be for one piece of work or it may be for several pieces of work. As I say, we think that's probably a fairer way of doing it because we're getting so much amazing work in. But back to the current competitions, I am going to award the first voucher for the work that we re received from Luke in 9LNC. He did some fantastic work on the height of tall buildings. And I'm also going to give a second voucher to Brennan in Alpha because he's been so engaged with the channel and his collage was absolutely outstanding, as indeed they all were. So well done to you two. If you can ask your parents and carers to send an email to this address, telling us the email address that we can send your voucher to and I will make sure that I get that done over the weekend, okay? Thanks very much guys, thanks again for watching. Um, have a great weekend and we'll see you on Monday. Bye bye.